The following audio may contain the personal testimonials of some Optavia coaches or clients of Optavia. The results relayed in these messages are based on the unique experiences of the participants and we cannot guarantee like or similar outcomes. While you may be inspired by these accounts, please note that any stories of success have not been verified and your individual path to optimal health will vary. As always, it is our recommendation that you consult with a healthcare provider before starting a weight loss program. Yours in health, the Optavia team. Hey, hey, everybody. Super exciting to see folks piling into the call while you're getting yourselves comfortable. Go ahead and put on the chat where you're tuning in from. Oh my goodness, we've got a shy bunch tonight. Oh, Middletown, New York. Hey, East Coast, I'm here from New Jersey. So I can sort of wave to you, check it out. We've got Florida, Colorado Springs, Michigan. Oh, Illinois, Virginia. Oh my goodness, it's coming in faster than I can read. Vancouver, Washington, Cherry Hill, New Jersey. Hey, fellow New Jersey person. Oh my goodness, look at that. I said it's a quiet bunch and then suddenly, boom. Well. I am Miriam Stabetsky, Certified Optavia Coach, and I am super duper excited to be your hostess tonight and bring you a topic that is near and dear to my heart and especially relevant. So I know you guys are all um, letting us know where you're from, but I'm going to ask you a different question to throw into the chat because I need a little reassurance that it's not just me. I'm going to describe a scenario and go ahead and write into the chat, yes, if you can relate to this, okay? You are rocking your plan or you know as much as ever whatever the plan is you're on whatever your your goals are you're rocking it and then you have a huge vacation coming up and you are so nervous oh my goodness i'm in a routine everything's going great and you know this vacation is going to present some sort of stumbling block so what do you do you make a plan you're like i am going to do this you set out all your little baggies on the counter you fill it with all of your fuelings you pack up your bag you're on vacation you eat those fuelings every two to three hours you are chug lugging your water you go out to eat with the folks you're vacationing with and you make amazing choices and you rock your plan on your vacation now i know that I don't see too many yeses yet. That wasn't the part I was asking you to relate to, okay? Here's the part I wanna know if you can relate to this. You nail it. You're away, you're on vacation, and you nail it. You're like, woo, I got this. And then you come home and boom, you fall apart. Yes, I see somebody said yes, yes, yep, yep, yes. Oh, I feel so much better now. I knew it couldn't just be me. I mean, I'm sorry for all of you that you're struggling with this, but I feel a little bit more human right now. Oh my goodness, the yeses are just exploding in the chat. Now, some of you might be thinking, I don't know, I don't go on too many vacations. So let's replace vacation with holiday, right? The holidays are coming and you're like, oh my gosh, the holidays are coming. You're all nervous. The holidays are gonna be so challenging. So you go above and beyond, you're on the phone. What are you guys serving? Great, you're bringing food to the holiday meal. You're helping prepare, you nail it. You're like, wow, I got this, what was I so afraid of? And then you go home and boom, the holiday's over and boom. Okay, I'm getting a lot of yeses and absolutes. The flip side is true too, right? I'm gonna give you a very real example. I don't even remember when, maybe a few months ago, my, uh, my back went out and I was in bed for a week. Well, I managed to get out of my bed every two to three hours. I like literally guzzled my water because I had to just have it every two to three hours. I had my feelings, I got back into bed. I was so down for the count. And I managed to rock my program when against all odds. And what do you think happened as soon as I got better? Okay. So this is what I fondly call the willpower hangover. Glad to know there are so many of you on the line who can, um, who can relate to this, makes it a relevant topic. So of course, when I was asked to host this call, I said, I know my topic. I'm gonna to talk about the willpower hangover because it is very relevant to me and I've spoken to other people and I know it comes up for them. Okay, so I was all excited, know we've got a relevant topic, but then I had a problem. 
I have a problem, right? I knew the problem, I knew the challenge, but I didn't quite know the solution. So pulled out one of my favorite books. I know I'm, I'm supposed to say Dr. A's Habits of Health. That is also one of my favorite books and I will get to it in a minute. But I pulled out another one of my favorite books, The Willpower Instinct by Kelly McGonigal. And she compares willpower to a muscle. And she talks about how just like when you use your muscles and you do a really hard workout, you may wake up the very next morning and feel, oh my gosh, exhausted. I can't move. I'm not going to walk. I cannot go to the gym today. Right? So that super hard workout yesterday causes you to pretty much do nothing today. And she talks about the possibility that willpower could be like that muscle and that if you work it hard enough, it may get worn out and it may get tired. I see folks in the chat are asking, what's the name of that book? Um, the Willpower Instinct. It's a personal fave. Anyhow, so that was one solution I came up with, but um, I didn't feel quite satisfied. So I kept searching. And I was thinking to myself, you know what else it could be? And again, please throw it into the chat. It feels so good over here when I'm just this one person sitting here, knowing I'm surrounded by a community of people who understand what I'm talking about. You rock your vacation against all odds or whatever it is, you fill in the blank, whatever your obstacle is that you were so nervous about and you managed to kill it. And well, at the end of it, well, you deserve a reward, don't you? <laughs> you come home and you're like, I managed to resist that ice cream, that all you can eat buffet, the all inclusive drinks. Well, gosh darn it, I've earned that fill in the blank, right? Some of you, maybe the ice cream in your freezer. Why is there ice cream in your freezer? Um, for others, who knows? It could be the next time you're out to dinner with friends and you're like, well, I resisted that whole time, so, okay. <laughs> And it happens to be this topic was more relevant than I ever imagined because I was away this past weekend at an awesome, awesome uh, leadership conference with Octavia. And while it certainly is an amazing opportunity to be surrounded by so many health coaches, it's a few days away from home, away from my routine in sunny Florida. And I was with friends and I knew that life wasn't going to look exactly like it looked here at home when it's easy. So what did I do? took my Ziploc bags, I went to my counter, I packed bags of my fuelings, I packed up what other foods I would need, I, I, you know, I, I was on my plan, I talked about it beforehand, I had my waters, oh my goodness. Wednesday, I rocked it. Thursday, I rocked it. Friday, I rocked it. You guys, by the way, I know you're all at the edge of your seats waiting to hear me talk about how I fell apart. It's, that's just not nice, okay? I held it together. Spoiler alert, this does not end in a binge fest by me, okay? But I'm getting there. <laughs> Saturday, I rocked it. Saturday night, we go to a banquet and I sit down at the table and there is this delicious piece of chocolate cake. And I held it up to the folks that I'm sitting with now. Please remember, I told you I was at an Octavia conference, so I was surrounded by a bunch of health coaches. And I held it up to them and I said, I've earned this. And I was half joking. I was only half joking because I knew I was leading this call. I probably would have been serious any other time before that. Of course, then I'm going around and shoving it in everyone's faces. And I'm like, look at this. You see this? I earned this the last few days. And it made me stop and think. Say, is this what I've been earning the past few days when I was rocking my program, Wednesday I rocked, Thursday I rocked, Friday I rocked. <laughs> Jackie's saying this really happened. It's not just a story. It is really, this is a really true story. <laughs> and I said to myself, all these days and months and well, years folks, cause it's been about four years for me, all these days and months and years that I've been working, it was not for this chocolate cake. And it forced me to think, what am I really working toward? And perhaps I should not admit by Saturday night, I didn't have all of the pieces of this mystery for this call 
put into place, but maybe that's why that chocolate cake ended up on that table. And it turns out the key to my willpower hangover is a tool that you on this call are already using and don't even know it. And you can deploy it as a superpower. So what is that special magical tool? I know you're all at the edge of your seat. I feel like saying, throw into the chat, drum roll. I mean, really, right? Aren't you like, tell me, tell me. Okay. We have some guesses, all good guesses. I see stop, challenge, choose, your why. Oh, and then I just have some folks who are like, tell us. Okay, I'll tell you, I'll tell you. I know, you're on the edge of your seats. It is called structural tension. I, I, that was a little anticlimactic. I, you're probably like, why'd she just hold up her hands? It's because I'm wearing a bracelet that says structural tension because it could not possibly be a coincidence that this topic for this call tonight was so relevant when we were at our conference that we even got souvenirs that say it on it. I mean, how convenient, okay? So now you may be asking yourself, what is this structural tension you keep flashing in front of the screen? Well, I can tell you that you've already used it to get to this call, right? Because you're on this call now, but you weren't on this call beforehand. You made a decision that you wanted to be on this call and you, right? You, you were not on this call. You made a decision to be on this call and had to do all the things in between. Maybe it was put it on your calendar. Maybe it was put your kids to bed early, depending on which, <laughs> which coast you're on. Your kids may not be asleep yet, but whatever it is, you were here, you wanted to be there, and you had to figure out all the things in between. Okay. Um, almost four years ago, I'm coming up on my four year anniversary of the day that uh, I decided enough was enough. And um, 252 pounds, I just said that out loud on the national recorded call. Gulp, I decided enough was enough. And I was on my journey to lose 100 pounds. Now, I'm going to say a whole lot of things now that may be a whole compliant mess. So my apologies in advance, but I lost my hundred pounds without deviating even once. I don't know if I'm the exception or the rule. Most people think that is crazy, like some sort of robot. And I remember once um, my coach asked me, she said, by the way, shout out to my awesome coach, Miriam Khan. I bet she's on this call. She doesn't miss a single one. But she asked me once, how did you stay so focused when you were on your journey to lose 100 pounds? I mean, that's a long time, 100 pounds. It doesn't, it's not overnight. And I said to her, well, I knew you were going to call me every week. And I, I didn't want to let you down. I didn't want to tell you I quit. <laughs> so while there is truth to that, the real truth is that I really wanted to lose 100 pounds as quickly as possible. And I was laser focused on my goal, always, always. I was 252 pounds and I wanted to be 151. I ended up losing 101. And I know that sounds like an accomplishment, but for those of you who are type A like me, it's like 101. It's kind of like, come on, it, it would have been worth it to lose one less pound, right folks? You know what I mean. Anyhow, so here I was, 252, and I desperately wanted to be 150, 152, right? Here I was in size, I don't even know if I was in a 3X at that point, kind of stopped counting at some point, and I really wanted to shop in a regular store, in the regular section. There was a lot of tension, and that tension kept me laser focused. Nothing got in my way because there was nothing I wanted more than this. Okay. Anyhow, this tension reminds me of this guy, right? I figure if I pull out a guitar, you might all think I actually know how to play, and that would probably be a whole lot better if I like strummed it now in a way that made sense. But the strings of st structural tension remind me of a guitar string, because if they're not tight enough, 
you ain't gonna get no music. So while we're doing this call, I want you to think about what is at the top of your structural tension chart. Because if you don't really want it that bad, you're not gonna get any music, okay? Please sing. You're funny. Sing, I could do. Play guitar, not so much. Okay. Anyhow, so here's what we're going to do now. We're going we're to have a little fun exercise. And you're going to start to think about what your goal is. What do you really, really want? Okay, how badly do you want it? And oh my goodness, cannot be a coincidence. I have a, a client who I really love dearly. And she messaged me tonight a quote. And I'm like, oh my gosh. I, I need to say that on the call. And she got it actually out of the willpower instinct. Boom, no coincidences, right? The concept of I did that because I wanted to versus I did that so now I can do what I really want. If it's the latter, you gotta think of a new goal. That's not really your why. Your why has to be something you really, really want. Okay. They keep talking about structural tension. This is not from here. Okay, folks? So I'm going to share my screen with you and show you a handy dandy doc that you can go ahead and ask your coach for because it's now stuck on my screen and you don't have it, but you're going to want it. Well, that is if you want to achieve your goal. So we'll take just a minute. Whoop. And take just a minute and shoot a text to your coach. Okay, we have a minute. So I'm just gonna keep blabbing away here while you send your coach a text. And you're gonna say to your coach, hi coach, can you please send me a link to a structural tension chart? Thanks. Okay. I told you I'm gonna give you a minute. I'm a woman of my word. <laughs> That's funny. Um, I see it in the chat. My coach is hosting this call. Hey, shout out to Jackie. I will send you a structural tension chart just as soon as this call is over. Now I know what you're thinking, but I don't want to wait for my coach to send it to me and I want to do the work now. I know. I also want you to do the work now. So here's what we're going to do. I'll give you one more minute. And by minute, I mean more like 10 seconds to go grab a pen and a blank piece of paper. We're going to create our own structural tension chart right now. You ready? Oh my gosh, look at that. We have coaches on the line who said I screen grabbed it and sent it to her. You're so awesome. Um, oh, look at this. I see, I see relationships going on in the chat over here between coaches and clients and this one wants one. This one's already sent one. Super cool. Love that you guys are getting down to it. Okay. Hopefully by now you have your pen and your piece of paper, right? I'm going to start with you with my blank piece of paper. Hang on one second while I shift things around on my screen. I got to keep track of the time here, folks. Okay, here's what I want you to do on the top of the page, about an inch from the top, draw a line. <laughs> you with me so far? Under that line, you're going to write the words goal, vision. Now, this is going to take a minute because you have to think about what you want. And I mean <laughs> what you really, really want. And I'm not going to break out into the Spice Girls right now, even though it is darn tempting, right? Tell me what you want, what you really, really want, okay? I wanna, I wanna, oh, I'm sorry, I said I wouldn't. Anyhow, so put it up there, what do you really want? And as, as my coach says, the why that makes you cry, okay? Put it up there, what is it? Maybe it's a weight. Maybe it's to run a 10K. Maybe it's to leave your job. Maybe it's to get that RV and travel cross country. Okay, what is it? What is your goal and vision? Can you do me a favor? You finished writing it on your page. Throw it in, throw it into the chat, be brave, be generous. Tell everybody what you want. Maybe it'll make them feel more comfortable to dream. Ooh, I want to love myself. Ooh, shorts. Love it. New teeth. I want adventure. For the person who wrote I want adventure, I, I challenge you to get a little more specific. What is your first adventure going to be? Oh, oh, oh my goodness. They're coming in so quickly. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna, I want to shop. 
Where do you want to shop? Ooh, bike packing. I don't even know what that means. Is that backpacking with a bike? That sounds cool. International missions. Get specific, folks. Get really specific. You know what I want? I really, really, really want a vacation home by the water in the woods where there are mountains and lots of wood and logs and um, ooh, a down payment for a new home. Look at this. We've got a lot of, you know, I want to say dreamers in the bunch, but you're going to make it more than a dream today. Okay. You're going to make this a reality if you follow structural tension and it's, it, it may not be a quick fix. This is not uh, an overnight thing. Oh my goodness. Look at all this. I want skinny jeans. I dare you to buy those skinny jeans and hang them up in your house because they're waiting for you. Look what we have. Oh, debt free. Okay. So you're going to want it, right? I'm not going to give any spoilers. Leave my job. Golly, touch my toes. I love that. That really resonates. Skydiving. Wow. Cool. Concrete goal over there. I do not share that goal with you. <laughs> I do not. Okay. At the bottom of your page, draw another line. And right under that line, write the words current reality. Where are you right now? So, the person who wrote you wants to go skydiving. Have you taken any lessons? Oh, I mean, I, I may be jumping the gun, but where are you right now? Meaning, are you amidst training? Where are you right now? Or if you want to be debt free, right? That was at the top. Where are you right now? And it's going to be painful possibly to write just how much debt you are in at the bottom of that page. But this page is for you and, and, and maybe for somebody you super duper trust to keep you accountable. Okay. At the top of my goal and vision, it used to say 150 pounds. And at the bottom, it said 252. At the top, it said where whatever I want, bought from wherever I want. <laughs> And at the bottom, it was, I could shop at one store and get whatever fit, not even what looked good, just whatever fit, okay? So what's your current reality? You know, maybe for those of you, I saw a lot of this, leave my job or, you know, the current reality. Ugh, maybe it's, I'm in an, I'm working 20 hours a, a day. I don't get to see my kids. I work in a hostile work environment. My commute is four hours. Whatever it is, write your current reality down at the bottom, as painful as it is. Okay, you have it? So far, top and the bottom have all been up here, for many of you also probably right here. But in order to get from your current reality to your goal, to your vision, and can you see it? You need to take action, okay? So what are your secondary choices going to be that are going to get you from point A to point B? If you wanna be debt free and you currently have X amount of debt, how much do you need to pay off a month? How are you going to earn that money? What are some other jobs you can take up, right? If um, you want to go skydiving and right now, no, right? I need to take lessons. I, I believe there's a weight requirement for skydiving because I have a friend who's on this call whose name I saw, um, who, who's one of her goals was skydiving and that got her to lose a whole good amount of healthy weight. So what do you need to do in order to make skydiving happen? Okay, so what are those secondary actions for me? I was 252 pounds. I wanted to be 152 pounds. Well, you better believe my secondary choices included, for me, the five and one. It included healthy sleep every night. It included a whole heck of a lot of water. Um, it included getting healthy in my relationships and it included getting on calls just like this. It included being in touch with my coach it included being active in our Facebook support community. It included a whole lot of reading. 
Okay. One of the books, or shall I say two of the books that were on my secondary choices were these. And hopefully you all own it. If not, it's something else to ask your coach about because you're going to see a whole lot of these charts in this book. Okay. So what are the secondary choices that you have to make to get to your goal and vision? Now here's something really interesting. I'm going to pull up my bracelet again. Dr. A was giving us this visual of our structural tension, right? So I'll use my, my example, right? It's 252 pounds and I want it to be 150. That's up here. Got a whole lot of tension. Well, guess what happened? As I started to lose my weight, look what's happening, right? There's less and less tension. And when there's less and less tension, what do we tend to do? I'm expecting to see the chat blow up. I'm expecting to see the chat blow up. Yes, we relax, we quit, we take less action. Okay, oh my goodness, yes, check you out. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I don't know why I forced you guys to really hit home on that one, but it's true. As we start getting closer and closer to our goal, there's less tension, and so we take less action. And what do we need in order to take action? We need that tension. So what do a lot of us do? Okay, I'm gonna show you this. I'm gonna get a little closer. Hopefully you could see my rubber band. Here's my current reality, here's my goal. As I get closer to my goal, there's less tension and I take less action. And what do people do sometimes in order to get more tension and take more action? They pull their current reality back. They go backwards. They start eating. They put their weight back on. They go back to their old habits and then they have that tension again. And then they start to take action. So Dr. Ray said, well, that's boring to go backwards. You've already been there. You wanna be creative, you wanna create. And he talked about with structural tension, the need for generative movement. So that while you're getting closer to your goal, what do you need to do? You need to stretch it. You need to make a goal for afterwards. You need to think ahead of where you went. So you wanna be debt free, that's your goal. And you see, wow, I'm really nearing that. I'm really getting there, I'm really getting there. Well, what are you gonna do when you're debt free? Come up with your next goal now and stretch it. Otherwise you may start to slack off. Oh, you know what? We're almost all paid off. Hey, I'm gonna go buy that new grand piano. No, don't stretch down here. You wanna stretch your goals, not go backwards to recreate that tension. Okay. Let's take you back to my chocolate cake, okay? I told you this story has a happy ending. I did not eat it. I've eaten it plenty of times before. Why did I not eat that chocolate cake on Saturday night? I'm gonna give you a few reasons so that you can walk away with something. Number one, I was super aware of my routine, of my willpower hangover. It is real, folks. It is real. So I was aware of the problem. I was aware of the obstacle. Number two, I knew I was leading this call tonight. And I knew that I was going to be talking about structural tension and it forced me to look at mine. And number three, well, I was surrounded by 1,400 coaches. So when you're surrounded by that kind of community, it really empowers you to make your best decision possible. So here are my questions that I'm going to leave you with on this lovely evening. Are you relying on willpower? Because that does get old and gets tired and gets used up. Or do you have a plan? Do you know what your obstacles might be? And do you have a plan for that? And who are you sharing that plan with? Who are you surrounding yourself with? I really hope that this resonated with you. Remember to ask your coach for that structural tension chart or open up your workbook and get to it. 
This audio may have contained the personal testimonials of some Optavia coaches or clients of Optavia. The results relayed in these messages are based on the unique experiences of the participants and we cannot guarantee like or similar outcomes. While you may be inspired by these accounts, please note that any stories of success have not been verified and your individual path to optimal health will vary. As always, it is our recommendation that you consult with a healthcare provider before starting a weight loss program. Yours in health, the Optavia team.